is a controller player. Harmanım, baba nerede çarşafım? Gördüğüm bu paketler benim dermanım. Hoppa yavaşça açıldı fermanım. Sakın kaçma buraya. What's up my fellas, please gamers, welcome back to another video, I hope you guys are doing extremely well today, I will give you guys over 10 tips that will be sure to help improve your overall experience in Novel Snap, whether you're new to the game, or you're just a couple of cubes short of a rank. Hey? Hey? No? Yeah. Just a quick disclaimer before we get into the video, you can find most of these tips on androidpolice.com, I will put a link to their website, to the article down in the description below. So feel free to check that out if you guys want to learn more about what they said. Tip number one, build your Marvel Snap decks around one or two cards. So if for some reason you guys aren't part of all of the nerds constantly browsing the internet to find the best meta decks for Marvel Snap, I would advise you to start doing so. Then try to be cool and just slap some random deck together. 99% of the time it's not going to work. Let's quickly just look over the meta decks. Almost every single meta deck has at least one or two cards that they use as an anchor, mostly five or six cost cards, basically cards that can win the game for you. Let's use an example of the Suri clone deck that was the meta for last season. It performed better than the Thanos locked or deck that most of you guys have probably seen. I, I mean Thanos literally got nerfed, or the Thanos Infinity Stones got nerfed, nevertheless. But the Suri clone deck outperformed the Thanos locked or deck. To a certain degree. Let's say Suri and Red Skull. Those are the two anchors of the team. The other cards are basically just there for support to help you a bit here, help you a bit there. But you need to play Suri on turn 4 and you need to play Red Skull on turn 5. Then you can decide whether or not you're going to play Taskmaster or Anamzala or even if you don't have them you've still got other cards that are selected to support the entire system of Suri and Red Skull. Tip number two. Upgrade your cards in a specific order. I believe you've noticed by now that your credits and boosters are earned at two extremely different rates. And if you've upgraded your cards wrong, well I hate to say it to you but you're gonna enter pool 3 with zero credits and about a million boosters. Not really that much, I'm just over exaggerating to, you know, give you guys the picture. Today's not my day is it? This is my brother's account compared to my account. Now, although I'm nearly at level 2000, I'm still living without credits. I'm fighting for daily challenges for credits and credits and credits. I've lived on the bread line <laughs> since pool 3. Whereas my brother played smart. He only upgraded his movement deck. And before that, he only upgraded his destroy deck. With the exception of a couple of other cards. Those were the only cards that he really upgraded, that he really focused on upgrade, which was a very smart move. He hasn't even split any of those cards. And he's got over 4,000 credits still in the bank. That's the difference between doing it the correct way and doing it the spleenless way. I, I did it the spleenless way, that's why I'm broke at this stage. So learn from my mistakes. Tip three, or as I like to call it, pro tip number one. Make sure to always, and I mean always, waste your credit on those fast upgrades. You know those upgrades in the shop, extremely overpriced, usually cards there where you don't have enough boosters to upgrade them? Exactly. Waste all of your credits on that, that way you'll be sure to reach new collection levels day in and day out. And also, you link your credit card so long because you're going to be buying credits at an alarmingly fast rate. Tip number four. Snap earlier rather than later. Now, first off, I might be a bit of a hypocrite talking about this subject <laughs> or this step, considering I usually snap around round five, round six. I think most of the times around four, which round four is still acceptable, but as soon as you get into round five, round six, the people will start leaving. As soon as you snap, they'll just surrender and you end up with one cube. Instead of where you, you, let's say you didn't snap and you won, you would have won two cubes. Or let's say you waited and maybe your opponent snapped, but you decided not to snap. You could have still walked away with four cubes. Let's give you guys another scenario. Let's say you snap on round five or round six. Your opponent decides to counter snap. <laughs> now you're stuck. You can't retreat. There's no chance of you retreating. The game does not allow you to retreat. What now? Now you have to play through and let's say that person wins. It's eight cubes on the line that you don't want to risk, but you can't back out. So you lose eight cubes against your opponent. On the plus side, you might win eight cubes, but really, let's be honest. How often does that happen? They ask you how you are. You just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because 
the correct thing to do is let's say you draw your hand you're quite confident in your hand but it's turn one so you know what let's let's just play we're not going to snap you turn two comes the second location reveals the location is the perfect location that you need for your hand for your deck then you can decide let's snap now your opponent's going to see oh he snaps it's round two you know what i'm going to play eventually let's say he decides to back out turn five or turn six you still get two cubes instead of just one or he decides to play through you get four cubes or let's say he snaps back but you're so confident that you're going to win you continue the game you continue to play and you win eight cubes it changes the entire game and it plays a massive role on your cube to match ratio i don't think that's a real thing but let's just say it's how many matches you play and how many cubes you accumulate you know tip number five don't worry about missing out on early turns let's say turn one comes you don't have a card to play don't stress yourself out don't get angry or uh, don't get annoyed that you can't play a card whether or not this guy plays yondu or unless you know yondu slaps or destroys one of your anchor cards but that's a different story that's let's say your opponent plays sunspot round one you can't play a card round two comes you still can't play a card now sunspot is at three let's say the person floated and the sunspot is at turn three you don't have killmonger or you don't have electra don't stress about that i'm gonna give you guys an example let's say you've got lizard the lizard wonderful card to play on turn two two cost five power card but he has a side effect let me ask you guys this now would you play lizard on turn two knowing it could give your opponent the chance to play four cards there or to focus on this location and drop the power levels of your lizard or would you play different cards on turn two and turn three and maybe play lizard with a com combination of another two cost card on turn four possibly on an empty location or on a location where your opponent's definitely not going to reach four cards think about that tip number six or as i like to call it pro tip number two always and i mean always make sure to play saint chi on the final turn against the dracula it's definitely going to work Tip 7. Learn your cards or get to know your cards. Look, it's impossible to know exactly what card your opponent has in his hands. That's a weird sentence. Or what he might or might not have in his deck. That being said, the more you learn your cards, eventually you're going to come to terms and you're going to get a grip of what your opponent might play. Let's say, for example, he plays Sunspot. The game continues as if normal. On turn 5, he doesn't play a card, instead he floats. Sunspot's power level goes up by 5. If someone floats on turn 5 they, with Sunspot in his deck, there's a high probability that he's going to drop Infernaut on turn 6. By the way, bonus tip. Make sure you know who reveals first. Follow the glowing line above your names to see reveals first. If the box around your name is glowing, that means you reveal first. And if the box around your opponent's name is glowing, that means your opponent reveals first. So let's say the opponent skipped and you know he's going to play Infinite. If you reveal first, saying is going to be absolutely useless. But let's say the glowing line is on his side. You know for a fact your opponent's going to play Infinite. Might change the outcome. Tip number eight. You only need two locations to win. Now I know this sounds cliche. I know it's the first thing they teach you when you install the game. But maybe, just, just bear with me, maybe it's the first thing because it's the most important thing. Now, yes, I am fully aware that there are select scenarios where you and your opponent draws on one location and it forces you to try and win as far as possible on another location, sometimes maybe even resulting in a draw. The main focus of the game is still to win two locations. Focus on two locations, work hard to win those two locations, work smart to win those two locations, and it's going to be a surefire way to earn extra cubes or, or consistently earn cubes at least. Also, make sure to retreat at the right time. Another another bonus tip it's like two bonus tips and like back to back things tip number nine practice playing against your friends when marvel snap first launched there was no way to practice when you create new decks you can't you couldn't practice against any friends the only way you could test out or practice using a deck was at the risk of losing cubes against other people in a real match now however everybody is allowed everybody has the opportunity to go into friendly battle share your code i mean even if you're in, on a discord server share your code they ask if anybody plays uh, marvel snap 
see your code and practice your deck against it. As easy as that. If that doesn't work, if you can't do that, force your brother or your sister, that's actually what I did, I forced my brother to download the game, <laughs> and get them to just run a random deck against yours, just so you can get a grip of what's going on. Are you willing to risk cubes with this deck? Are you willing to test it against other people in a real match? It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful feature, and it's everybody can use it. Tip number 10, and possibly the one that involves all of these tips the most, if I can say it like that, Build your strategy around the locations. One of the most important things in Marvel Snap are the locations. The locations can literally make or break your game. They can work for your deck or they can literally counter your deck. They can work for both players or they can counter both players. Let's say you can play Watu. I wouldn't personally recommend Watu. Watu sucks unless maybe you run it in a Cerebro 2 deck. I don't even run Watu in my Cerebro 2 deck. Now, other cards that you might want to exchange in random decks, let's say it's not a Cerebro deck and you want to kind of control the locations, I would advise you run Scarlet Witch, run Rhino or run Storm. Let me give you guys an example. Let's say you're running the Cerebro 2 deck. The first location reveals its Onslaught Citadel. You're excited, you're hyped because you know you can, you can basically touch, you can taste, you can smell, you can feel the cubes in your near future. Second location reveals Crimson Cosmos. <clears throat> Instantly you lose that location, but you know what? You're still gonna stay positive. Let's wait and see what happens at location 3. Location 3 reveals, boom! Sanctum Sanctorum. What happens now? I'll tell you what, you can't play. So what would be the smart thing to do now? Retreat. Let's say those were two other completely different locations. That would be a completely different story, wouldn't it? Because now you can actually play the Cerebro deck and with Onslaught Citadel on your side, five turns, you play your card, turn six comes, you play Cerebro followed by Mystique, bam! And that actually brings me back to tip number eight. You only need to win two locations. So what do you do with Cerebro and Mystique? You offer up this entire location. You're willing to lose this entire location to focus on winning those other two locations. So there you guys have it. Those were 10 tips to sort of improve your overall experience with Marvel Snap, whether you're new to the game or you're a couple of cubes sort of a rank. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for staying till the end. Remember to leave a like and a sub and share the video with your friends. Till next time, my fellow streamers game. If someone floats on turn five they, with side spot in his deck, there's a high probability that he's gonna drop infinite on turn six. Those are the types of things you get to learn, or you you get you 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 you, 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 you get to realize.